So in this video, we are going to see uh, how to uh, read data from database. Okay, in the previous video, we have seen how to connect to a database. Now, after connecting, how to read a table uh, data, that is uh, uh, the record which, which we have stored in a table in the database. So that is what we are going to see. Before that, we will see, uh, you can close the database with the command mysqli underscore close and then with the db handle. So how you can read, how you can connect by using mysqli underscore connect and then you have to give the first argument. It needs a four arguments. This must, mysqli connect needs four arguments. The first argument will be the local host and the second argument will be the user, which is nothing but root in our case. And then uh, empty the password, there is no password here. So empty password and then the uh, name of the database. Then or type. This is, if this is not successful, this statement will be executed and it stops. If it becomes successful, then this echo statement will be executed. So that's what we have seen. Okay, now retrieving data from the database. First we have connector. Then uh, after connecting, we have to uh, select a particular table from the database and then extract data and display it on the browser. This is what our next step. So what are the steps we have to do? First, open the connection using MySQL. That's what here we are doing. Open the connection using MySQL connect. Okay, so first step is already we have done. Then the next step, select the respective database. That's what here we have given the database. Then using select query and MySQL query. Okay, select the required table. So here, how we are going to use this uh, in a string called Query. This is only a user defined variable. So, in a string variable, we type the query which helps us to extract the data. So, normally we know select statement is the one which extracts data from the table. So, here we give select star from ST table. Then we are going to pass it for this query which is nothing but my SQLI underscore query, then the handle DB handle, and then dollar query. That is nothing but this. So you can type the command here itself. Okay, the select statement fully you can type, but it will be a very big one. That is why we are writing the query separately. And then that query, we are passing it as an argument. That string we are passing, this is a string. So you have to give it in the quotes. So this will be a string, query string. Then. If this fails, what has to be done? So this will be executed, unable to execute, and then the query we are displaying. So that if you display the query, we will be able to know what mistake we have done. Then echo the result table. That is, this is what. Now, this will produce a result. We will see what, why it is producing result. First, we will do this portion. Already we have done uh, the connector. Now we are going to write the, uh, we are going to select the table. So what is the table which we have created previously? We have created already it's there. See here. Uh, student underscore personal. That is the table. This is what we have created. Database name is student db and the table name is student uh, underscore personal and we have created two uh, row that is two records. So this is what we are going to access. So when you use select star from both the rows will be sent to the uh, both the rows will be retrieved. So now we are going to write a command which will extract that. So first we will write a query. Select store and I give store all or you can give where class giving a criteria say for example those role number is equal to 100 so if you give only that will be extracted so but first let us see select store from student person you have to be careful while typing because uh, see to that it is uh, not giving uh, that is you are typing the correct name of the table whether it is caps or small, you have to type exactly as it is. Then 
we have to execute the query. So let us put it in a uh, more meaningful variable called result table. All these are only user defined variable. Here we are giving it meaningful. You can give just result or just table like that, but it has to be a meaningful. So what we are giving is result table, then we have to execute the query. So my SQLI underscore query. So this is used for executing the query. So now um, we have to give the first argument will be the DB handle that is database connectivity, which we have given here. Okay, so this is what, so that is what we are going to give here. And then the next argument will be the query. Or if it fails, what will happen? Unable to execute. So this is only meaningful for the user. So we give, uh, we attach the query also. What we have a user, we would like to know. If any error, it will, we will be able to see that. Then echo result table. Definitely this will be posting an error because it will, uh, the query already we know there are two rows. So both the rows will be in that result table. Till this, there will be no mistake. But when you are trying to display it on the browser, it will show you error because result table will be an array of data. Two rows is there, so it will be storing it as a two. The, it, will, it will return the value as array. Now that result table array will have consist of two, uh, two entries, that is, a result table of zero, one, and result table of one, it will be another one. If there are 10, 10 rows, then 10 elements will be in the result table. So we have to uh, put it in a loop, and then only we can see the data one by one. So now we'll see how this gets executed. Yes, it is connected successfully, but recoverable fatal error because object of class my SQL result could not be converted to string. That's the mistake here. The meaning of this is the query is executed successfully, but the problem is you are not able to echo it because it returns more than one row. So now, even if one row is there, it is better to put it in a but uh, better to put it in a loop or uh, extract one by one. So now we'll see how to do that. So, so this was the error which we have received. So the above steps are enough for getting result from MySQL server, but you need more functions to display the result in a proper format. That is why the error has come. So there are two ways in which you can extract. The first one is MySQLI fetch array and the another one is MySQLI fetch row. So the first one is responsible fetch a result row as an associative array or fetch a result row as an enumerated array. So now we are going to use the first one fetch array. We'll see how we are going to extract data using that. So what happens here? All these things we have already seen till this. So okay, till this. Now, the next one, we are going to extract row by row. So for that, we are going to use MySQLA fetch array. So what this will do, it is going to extract data from this result table and then uh, put it uh, in this row. Now we'll see what happens. And then we print it on the screen like this. Say dollar row, then student ID. We, we should here, uh, whatever is coming here, which is nothing but the column name which you have defined in the table. So that has to be given here. So now we'll see what is the column name we have given that first. What's the column name we have given here? ST name, roll number, mark one. So this is the column name which we are going to use it here. 
So let us type that. This row will give you error, so we'll remove that. Now we are going to use the MySQLI fetch array. So this is what we are going to pass. That is, this will, uh, this will extract the data from the database that is table and put it in the result table. From this, we are going to extract just like an array one by one, array element one by one. Now we are going to display it on the screen. This is for just distinguished from the previous statements. So I'm giving a BR. This the name is the one which I have given that. So that beer. So that in the next next line, the data will be printed. Row. Let me next print roll number. Well, well. But beer. And the next one is mark one. Okay. Yes, now we'll execute this statement. We'll see what what will be the output. See here, it is printing the first row only, Anita 190. This is nothing but our first row. I'll show you that. See here, the first row will be only will be uh, printed. Even if the result array will consist of this also, it prints only the first row. Why? It is because uh, when it when you execute MySQLA fetch array, the first element only will be first first record only will be extracted from this result table even if the result table consists of all the records my sql fetch array will take one by one so first time it will take the first row then uh, that is what we are printing so what we have to do is we have to put it in a loop and then uh, we have to move it uh, so that it will be take taking the values from the result table one by one so what we have to do is we have to put it in a loop, then we can see our output. So let me put it in a while loop. While so while row is fetched, we move this to everything in a loop. So now what happens? Automatically. My SQL fetch array, it fetches the data from the result table and in each loop, automatically the pointer will move to the next next record until all the record is over in the result table, the value will be printed on the screen. Now we'll see the output. So 
state has printed the next record also but this is not in a neat format expected form we don't know what is the heading we just know anita 190 what is 100 what is 90 we may think 100 is a mark and is also a mark we don't know whether it is a roll number or a mark whatever it is so in this case we have to print the column heading so how to do that and in a neat table format so how to do that so in order to do that we have to adopt the uh, html tags so we know we have html tag called table we can print it in like a border i'll show you the how it will look like when you print it like a border see this is what we have so i want output to be like this that is uh, roll number and so on okay name all these things so if you want to be like this what you have to do you have to put the html tag that is table border equal to 1 so this will start a table okay with a table border then we have to create rows and then columns and then uh, uh, cross the table so that when you put it in the loop automatically rows will be created first for table with the border is created then the row will be created dynamically depending upon the number of rows uh, number of records in the result table so now we will see how to write it so table border equal to 1 so so with this execution a table with the border will be created and then end this put how to with the end of the table okay now then i execute you only table is created okay table border some mistake okay here i have not given opening tag now we have to make that uh we have to create rows so for that let me remove this br no need because automatically when a row is created each line a row will be created row by row is so uh, there is no need for giving me the br now i give tr and then there is for creation of the uh, row and then td for creation of table so the first column to the name will be created uh, it that will be printed and then So let me remove this and replace it. Okay, now all these are uh, column-wise printer uh, going to be printer, and then finally uh, we are going to create a new. row for the uh, next uh, printing of data so echo uh, not only that we are going to close this row so here this first this will take care of whenever it goes inside the while loop for the next record it creates a row so now we have to close the row okay 
So now we'll see how this gets executed. See, now it is coming in a neat table format. But again, the problem is it is not having any heading. Even if it comes like this, but it, it has come a neat format as a record. Now I want the heading to be printed. So how to print the heading? So for that, what we have to do is, we have to give the TH. TH is responsible for printing of the heading. That is in HTML. But we can extract the head, uh, column heading alone uh, by using the MySQLA fetch fields. That is MySQLA fetch fields is responsible for extracting the uh, column heading. So now what we have to do is, we have to extract using my SQLFH fields and the result table so that the fields will be uh, column heading alone will be uh, placed in the field. Then using for each command, you can iterate uh, one by one column and then we are going to print it using the uh, TH. TH is responsible for heading print, column heading in our HTML. So using that, we are going to do that. So how to add it here? That's what we are going to do. So we'll see how to do that. That is, it's nothing but what we have to do is see after here. Uh, first, uh, after this query, then we extract the fields, then build the table border. Then after that, we build the, we extract uh, each and every column by using the for each, and then we print it using this echo. And in between th and close th, we print the column heading. So this is responsible for printing that because it is taking it as column. And then this name will extract uh, uh, the value from the fields. Now, after that, it is as usual, the previous array. So now we'll see how to do that. So after this coding, uh, that is before this, we can get that statement. Yes, dollar field heading allow. We extract it. Fields equal to mysqli fetch fields. Fields, then result for it. Result table, sorry. Okay. Now, uh, after this uh, is extracted, the table border will be printing. Then what we have to do is we have to use the for each loop to iterate the uh, array fields, fields array. For each, then dollar fields. As dollar column. Here, this is a user, both are user defined only. So now, you see H O. Then right, this is responsible for th is responsible for printing the column heading. Then dollar call. This is nothing but in this it will extract one by one column heading. So column. Then how we can print using this property name, and then again close the th. Okay. So all the column will be printed. Then you go for this while loop and then close finally close the table. Now we'll see how this gets executed. We'll see the output of that. Yes, there must be some mistake we have done so that it is not printing on the roll number. We'll see what it is. So this extraction is over, but 
comes to some mistake here. The name is correct. Anyway, this is how you extract the data from the database. Uh, if we edit. It's correct only. Some mistake I must have made. Oh, that is because I didn't close the column. Okay, because of that, it is giving the error. Okay, now we will see. Anyway, what? Whenever you open a tag, HTML tag, you have to close it, or else it happens like that. Now we will execute this code. Oh, now it's correct. So this is how you extract data one by one from the database and then display it on the screen.